two acres in the countryside? When you make it, that moment, you thought, I've done my work, I've, I've put all my time in. I've spent time down and in the hot, and I've gone out and I've made it, and I'm just going to enjoy the green, lovely, beautiful view, walk on a summer's evening. Because the city has that rumble all the time. It's a frenetic energy. You can feel it sort of always humming. This, the ground is going, and this plane's flying over, and the trucks, and the cars, and the hum all the time. It beats upon you every day, and you can smell it. There's no fresh, flowery smell. There's this potent piss coming at you. It's not easy, that frenetic energy, to digest it. Some people stay, like Faye Gordon. She's worked with the community center her whole life. Over the hill right here, 34 years she's put in time with that community center. Each time there was a cut, every time there was the first riots, the second riots, the first cut, the second cut, the third cut, she was there working with her community group. And it's not just Faye on the Loughborough Park estate. It's Mary Simpson up on Rupal Park, or Jean Carrigan on Brixton Hill. These are women who stay. They choose to give that extra time when they're dealing with the normal daily tasks that you have, like paying the electrical bill, or making sure that the food is on the table, or their children, their well-being of their children, that they have enough time and energy put into them so that they will grow up healthy and strong. They don't have time to deal with global economics or policy directives. They're dealing with incredible difficulties all the time. Every different week, there's another idea of shutting down the community center or moving the, the whole children's pitch where they're playing to the other side or take it away altogether. There's this real question. So when you talk about the fact that you and I are sitting here trying to come up with amazing ideas for the future, and you realize, yes, I know that the Antarctic and the Arctic are melting, and there's ozone depletion, and, and there's all, this, this, all that, that energy from the city, all those fumes, you have to realize that 91% of global capital is tied to fossil fuels. That means these multinational companies, these huge juggernauts of industry who are pressing the system forward, have one, one responsibility, and that's fiduciary. That means the largest amount of return in the shortest amount of time. So of course, that dictates what happens to policy next. And politicians listen to opinion, whether you're working in a small area on a small school and you're one lone woman on an estate who's been doing it for 40 years or you are a massive institution, your opinion is heard. But if you have a 100,000 pound budget, your opinion is heard louder. So I, I sit here like you do every day and try to come up with ideas. I'm terrified at what's happening. I'm, I'm shocked a lot of times when I see what's in the news and in the media and how the policy has been shifting all around us. But more than this sort of shaking that sort of comes up through the ground of the city and the fear is the anger. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I mean, we all wanted to say that. And I get to say it on stage. But I think it's a, real, it's a real, real, beautiful moment when we can say that. Because I, I, I planted the windowsill outside my house with green uh, basil and tomatoes. And I planted a garden. I planted my friend's garden. I put solar panels on my roof. I put solar panels on my friend's roof. I, I draft-proofed my window. and and the door to save energy. I switched my energy provider. But I can't put 
a garden in every single one of your houses, and I can't do it for the, or all of our communities, and I can't do it for the nation. I can't put solar panels on everybody's roof. Because I, I can do lots of stuff. But I hit a wall about four years ago. The shaking, the talking, none of it worked. The enthusiasm didn't work. So I shared an idea of resilient cities with people around you today. Some of them are here today. Some of them are just over the hill here in the left borough park. Some are up on the hill in Rupel. I shared an idea. I said, how do we create resilient communities? And I heard something back. It was, we need to create jobs. We need to create internships. We need to create support systems for young people. We need to deal with fuel poverty. Brixton, which sits in Lambeth, spends 120 million pounds a year on energy. In Lambeth, 160 people die every year to, due to fuel poverty. That's right around here. Some of these big estates are losing people because they're cold. We came together, repowering London, to make a cooperative, to come up with ideas of how to put power stations on community centers and estates. And lo and behold, we did something, not I. A bunch of uh, collectivized started turning us and thems into we. Now, in that moment, a huge thing began to grow. And I felt a bit of pride. On October 13th last year, I was walking with that pride. I could feel it right, right about here. And I had my chest out. Now, I don't usually get up at 6.30 in the morning every day. Actually, honestly, I don't get up at 6.30 in the morning ever. But I was up at 6.30 in the morning. And I was coming down Atlantic Avenue. And it was absolutely beautiful. Sun, gorgeous. And I was daydreaming about how repowering London could work with Brixton Energy and other energy groups to create resilient communities. We could empower people by giving them energy systems. They could take back that financial system, this juggernaut, which was ripping apart whole communities and making decisions in policy that people who were giving their entire devotion and energy to could not stop alone. But together, we could do it. And from the side, a cop car runs past. Taken aback, I collected myself and looked up. And I was coming up right over there to the Loughborough Park Estate. And all around was cordoned off in yellow and black tape. Whole sea of people looking around. What's going on? Mate, 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 mate. Do you see what happened? No, what's happened? What's happened? And I began, once again, to shake this whole project. What's happening? What's going on? Everything's cordoned off. No one's allowed in, man. No one's allowed in. Mate, three girls and a boy. It was stabbed this other girl. It was about texting. She's dead. You can't get on the estate. I was terrified. I had four lorry loads of solar panels, two cranes, 14 people, three interns coming to install solar panels. And if it didn't get put on, we wouldn't be able to put it, turn it on, because the national policy was just happening to change again because they had decided that, that energy was getting too much subsidy, that renewable energy was getting too much subsidy, they had to reduce it. Well, I don't know exactly what uh, type of energy I'm exuding today, but I can say that I definitely jumped over the first cordoning and over the second cordon and pushed past one policeman and ran right to the door of a stream of doors. And I got there, and I just started banging in every single one of the gates on the Skiles Gardens on up on Loughborough was chained shut with a lock. I banged on one door. I banged on the next door. And I ran to Shemsa's door. Shemsa, Shemsa, it's Agamemnon. It's the, it's the guy from the cooperative that we're going to set up the, the community energy project. You know, we, we're going to, with renewable energy, 
Nothing. No noise, no voice. And I looked at the chalk mark in the center of the state, right where the bodies had been. And I just leaned into her door. And I was like, Shemsa. And as I banged on the door, I looked at that cordoned off area and realized this was exactly why we do what we do. Shemsa, those children are in the same class as Habiba and the other girls who are working on the internship. This is why we do the project, to get these kids out so we can get them off the estate. And I heard a shuffle behind the door. And she opened the door and said, when you did the first project, I didn't really believe it could happen again. No one ever comes through for us. But you're here now. We got up on that roof and we installed the whole system. And that night, that bit of pride that I was talking about right there, I sat there and I said, we did it. We did it. And you know what I did? I said, I said, we can give these kids a way out. And Shem said, open the door. Faye Gordon tapped on my shoulder and she said, our children don't need a way out. They need a way into society. They need to support. They need to feel they're supported, part of the system. And that is what I had to listen to and change from I to we. Kevin Wilson was working on the project. And he, after four days, said, mate, this is wicked. I'm an electrical engineer. I've been out of work for three and a half months. And this project has me excited. We're going to make serious buku on this. We're going to make money like you couldn't believe. Everybody's going to take it up because it helps everything. It's triple bottom line, yo. We've got, we have community. We've got, we've got economy. We've got, we've got the, the environment. It's all right there in our hands. We can do this. And people are going to get behind it. But we have to get rid of this cooperative thing because, you know, look at Steve, Steve Jobs, yo. Bill Gates. They didn't have a cooperative. <laughs> they had a limited company. Now, with a limited company, you can kick right through stuff, and no one stands in your way. If you have to have a cooperative and discuss everything, it takes too much time, and we'll lose power. We're going to put in all our energy and effort, and something will happen, and we'll get somewhere, and someone's going to tell us to get off. It's happened to me before, and it'll happen to us now. But after two weeks of working on the installation, of solar panels on a plant, the second and third solar energy power plant in London on estates, giving people for the next 20 years financial revenue to run their community centers, over 20% of it going each time, making returns to investors, hitting those deliverables of tax returns for people. He looked at it and he said, Looking at this now, after working with you all, I've realized now that Steve Jobs got kicked out of his own company. We are going to make it. And when Nadine, after 15-week internships for young people, then paid work experience on the roofs. So after six times of being late, I began to question her initiative and enthusiasm. And Mary Simpson, who lives on the Rupert Park estate, who clearly knows how to engage young people and has been seeing them grow up from little young people to incredibly beautiful, intelligent, strong-willed young individuals, shrugged her shoulder. I'll talk to her mother. But it's up to her to show up. And Nadine after she finished the internship, looked at me and she said, I have never finished anything before. 
I never felt like I could do it. And I know I was late six times. I was actually late seven times. But something happened to me in that moment, and I realized that I could do it, that you believed in me, and then not more important than you believing in me and my friends, Aisha and Serena, believing in me. I believe in me. And I am now the head, or I'm the secretary for the girls' community. And I would like to be a teacher for young people. These local leaders, these moments of engagement where they have a chance to be supported, young people, middle-aged people, out of work, in the engagement of doing draft proofing on their homes, of becoming engaged so much so that they, they do an internship and on more than just fuel poverty, but on learning about the finance and the IT and the technical and the media around an energy project, they become a part of that process. And they also become the next Faye Gordons. They become the next Mary Simpsons. They become the next Gene Carrigans to take that system to, for the next 30 and 40 years. That energy, that energy that's so frenetic, that keeps each one of these things where it goes, that energy can, is misused and mistreated. And when it's focused, when it's focused directly, you end up taking power to the people, which we've all heard before, and young people are the future. And you turn it into power to, for, and by people. You talk about repowering communities and creating local energy. If you break that down into the two forms of creating local energy, you can break it into people power and renewable power. And that is when you begin to have something, where you switch from I to we. And we can do this. Thank you.